Why would anybody spend upwards of £200 on something you'd hopefully never use? That's what dash cams basically are, but I always try to have one running now. And not because I have a pessimistic outlook on life, I just like knowing that I'll never miss a thing. Maybe they should be called FOMO cameras. Now we're going to be looking at four of the leading motorcycle dash cams in this video, which I've been using for at least eight months, and in some cases a couple of years. We'll look closely at the quality of the footage, so, so please do switch over to the highest resolution on YouTube, or whatever you're watching this on, but also remember that YouTube does add compression, so these won't look quite as good as they could. That's particularly relevant if you're watching it through um, Facebook. Now, before we get into it, I want to do my usual thing of stressing that our reviews are completely independent. I'm paid a salary to create content, so I don't need to keep anybody sweet, and I've got no commercial obligations. We make these videos and write articles on bikesocial.co.uk in order to help promote Bennett's Insurance and Bike Social membership. That membership is pretty exciting to us as we're building what is the UK's biggest bike club, and you can be part of it. There's a lot still to come, but you can already make some huge savings on riding kit, accessories, training, track days, and a lot more. So check it out for yourself at bikesocial.co.uk forward slash join. You may well find discounts and competitions for products we've reviewed, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. These deals in no way influence reviews. That's someone else's job in the main, so dig around and you'll find products I've rated highly and some I haven't. Anyway, I'm going to try to keep this as concise as I can, so let's jump into the first camera. We'll look at how they each perform, then compare and summarise at the end. The Thinkware M1 was the first motorcycle dash cam I reviewed, and it's currently fitted to my BMW S1000XR. It was £349, but I'm now seeing it for between £259 and £299. It records at 1080p 30 frames per second front and rear. It offers image stabilisation on the front. It's IP66 rated. It has built-in GPS, but no external antenna. It comes with a remote control. The microphone is built into the remote. It supports 32 or 64 gigabyte cards. You're going to have to strip your bike down and spend some time thinking about where and how to mount any dash cam to your bike, but I found it pretty straightforward on my XR. The main unit's connected to ground and are switched live. And I use the Denali CanSmart, but otherwise look for an auxiliary power supply. It is trickier on CAN bus bikes, most of the modern ones, but auxiliary powers are just a switch live. Now, I always solder and heat shrink connections as it's best to avoid crimps on bikes, especially those that cut into the insulation, as water can get in and cause the cable to rot over time. Overall, the Thinkware is pretty easy to install, but those cameras are bigger than the others here. And recording starts and stops automatically when the ignition's turned on and off, but as that cuts the power to the unit, there's a supercapacitor built in that allows it to properly close off the clip it's recording. If it didn't, it'd be corrupted and you'd lose that last one. This is also a unique selling point of the Thinkware in that if a catastrophic incident caused all power to be lost to the device, it should still save the clip. Though that's a very unlikely scenario and to be honest, one I'd rather not think about. There's a Thinkware app for Android and iOS which allows you to get a live view from the cameras, check settings and view or download clips. But now let's have a look at the footage. As you can see, there's a decent field of view and high contrast lighting is handled reasonably well if leaving it a bit dark in the shadows. I've used the default settings though, but you can switch the exposure to brighter or darker in the app, so don't let this put you off. You can turn on image stabilisation for the front camera only, but its effects are marginal and it's a long way off a decent action camera. Plus it can make some areas look a bit smeared, so I, I don't bother with that. Clarity at speed is pretty good, with number plates often holding detail. Night footage is good, though as you'd expect, other vehicles' headlights can flare out those number plates. Now this is how the audio sounds on the Thinkware M1. Now this is how the audio sounds on the Thinkware M1 in the shelter of my garage. 
about two meters away from it. This is the second time I've had to record this because the first time I did it, the file corrupted as I turned the ignition off. And that's not the first time I've seen this happen with this device, which is making me lose confidence in that supercapacitor design as it, it is sometimes corrupting that final file. I've generally been pretty impressed with the remote mounted mic when on the street, though of course it gets noisy once you pick up speed. To be honest, I hate testing intercoms. Well, the noise jump. Thinkware has its own reskinned version of Dashcam Viewer that allows you to view its files and only its files with the GPS data on a Mac or PC, which is something the others I've tried don't. That saves you the $35 or about 27 quid for the universal Dashcam Viewer that you can buy. Now you don't need that to just watch the clips, but the software does help sort them and it shows you that data from the GPS. It's in here that you can see the limitation of not having a remote GPS antenna on the Thinkware. I have it under the seat, so there's no metal to speak of, but it does have my fat ass block in the satellites. And in built up areas especially, this can mean the map becomes inaccurate and the speed isn't always displayed. Okay, next up, the Viofo MT1. At £217.95, this is a relatively budget dash cam, which I have on my Kawasaki ZX6R. It records at 1080p, 30 frames per second front and rear. It's IP66 rated. It has built in GPS and an external antenna. It comes with a remote control. The microphone is built into the remote. It supports up to 256 gigabyte cards. Fitting's no less involved than with the Thinkware, but I am quite impressed with the hardware it comes with. This might be the cheaper option, and that shows in the feel of the plastic case of the main unit, but the small cameras are really easy to mount thanks to neat little plates that can be bent and stuck almost anywhere. And you get spare adhesive pads. Now the main unit attaches to the motorbike's battery with open spade connectors, so you can just slide them under without having to take the screws all the way out plus you'll need to find a switch live to connect to. Again, pretty easy to install, and once it's done, the camera starts and stops automatically. The app works fine with access to all the settings and the ability to view and download clips. But right, to the footage. High contrast is handled very well, and pausing here, you can see it retains pretty good clarity. There's a good field of view, and I should apologize for the fact that where I've mounted it means you can see some of the fairing. I don't mind if you don't. Into direct sunlight, the footage is still good, if a little dark, but overall I'm impressed and the app allows you to adjust the exposure up or down by two stops in half stop increments. I've just stuck with the default here for the demonstration of this, but nighttime clips are good, though it has a strange tendency to seem to fall out of focus. Now, as obviously there's no focusing built into this, I think it's just the compression working, and as it only happens when there's little detail, it improves when the scene gets more complex. Now clips hold up well to enlargement, which again is fairly impressive on something at the lower price bracket, if not cheap. This is how the audio sounds. This is how the audio sounds on the Viofo MT1 out of the wind in my garage. Outdoors, I found it just passable. The mic in the remote seems to struggle a bit to me. So with the remote mounted just down below the bars on this ZX6R, this is how now the audio is with the engine off and up. When you're riding, well. Unless it's really shielded from the wind, it just doesn't perform great. Now, there's no dedicated software for Mac or PC, so you'll need to buy Dashcam Viewer if you want to analyze clips. Here they are running on it, and you can see that the remote GPS antenna gives a good reception as you can position it wherever you want. Of course, you can just watch these clips in your choice of media player without the GPS data. I did notice a bug on the Viofo in the if you clumsily hammer the remote control with thick gloves on, it can return recording off altogether, only resetting when you turn the ignition on. That's to do with turning the Wi-Fi on with that button, because then it goes, right, you want to stop recording and access the app. It only shows up rarely, but it is disappointing and could leave you missing something important. So if you've got one, 
just take care if you are pressing the button. To be honest, once you've had your initial first couple of weeks of wanting to play with it all the time, you tend to leave it alone. It's only if something happens, you're like, oh, I want to catch that. Um, so just be careful pressing that button. Next, we have the Inov K3, which costs £299.95. It records at 1080p, 30 frames per second, front and rear. It's IP67 rated. It has built-in GPS and an external antenna. It comes with a remote control. The microphone can be positioned anywhere. It supports up to 256 gigabyte cards. The cameras are nice and small on the Inov 2, but I found this the trickiest to fit. You still need to strip the bike, but I'm just not a big fan of the brackets. You only get one stick on mount, and that's a bit of a faff as one of the screws gets hidden when you apply it, so you can't adjust that rotation once it's stuck on. And you also don't get any spare adhesive pads. And I don't like how you have to stack two pads on top of each other. It just seems a bit of a poorly considered design. Now you get L brackets to help mount the cameras, but I just feel this is the weaker of the bunch for fitting options. I did manage to screw into an existing M5 fastener on the tracer, going through the mount's M6 hole, but it took some fiddling. Now other reviewers do seem happy with how they've mounted it, so maybe I'm just being over fussy and a bit over anal about how things go in. Bear in mind I'm the kind of person who machines mounts to get my spotlights just right on my uh, XR. There are open-ended spades to connect to the live and neutral on the bike battery, which again I like because you don't have to take the screws all the way out and lose your other connections. Plus, you'll need to pick up on a switched live. Now I use the auxiliary power supply on the tracer, but the plug's low down on the front, so I had to extend the Inov's cable a bit. Again, the camera starts and stops automatically, plus it can record in TS format, which means if all power was instantly lost, the clip being recorded should be okay. Now I had no problems playing these back in QuickTime on my Mac or editing them for this in Premiere Pro, but if you're struggling to view them on your computer, you can switch to MP4. Now there's a dedicated Inov app and it's easy to use, allowing you to adjust settings, get a live view from the cameras and view and download clips. So the footage. It's not ridiculously bright sunlight in this clip, but the Inov tends to go for a brighter image than the others. Pausing, you can see that in this case, with a closing speed of about 100 to 120 mile an hour, the car's plate isn't legible, though it is when we switch to the rear camera. Riding into the sun, the Inov's brighter bias means the sky gets more burned out, but the shadow details are clearer. Surprisingly, you can't currently adjust the exposure of the Inov cameras. So, you know, the others can do that, so it's a bit of a shame you can't do that if you wanted to. Under high contrast situations, the Inov seems to struggle with a lot of flaring and quite visible artifacts. Field of view is nice and wide. And zooming in, we can see how the detail holds up. At night, it has pretty much the same performance as the others. Now you can position the mic wherever you like on the in-off. Now you can position the mic wherever you like on the in-off. And as you hear me now, it's tucked between the clocks and the screen. So it's shoved from the wind and I'm probably two metres or so from it. It's still affected by wind at speed, but I guess you could put it under the seat if you wanted. But my preference is to make sure it will pick up speech, which is typically going to be when I'm at a standstill, when it's something that could be needed. <laughs> You do feel like you can really use I mean, it's 117 brake horses. Really? Yeah, but it, it just seems to all come in. Yeah, nice it's surprising and low. for a 900. Yeah, so yeah. How much, how much grunt it has actually got. Now again, I was able to play back the TS files easily on my Mac, but if you want to view the footage with GPS data on a computer, you'll need to buy a dashcam viewer. And here you can see it's working great on there. 
Finally, we have the curveball here, the Technologic DC1, which is a front and rear helmet mounted dash cam that costs $179.95. It records at 1080p, 30 frames per second front and rear. It's IP67 rated, though I have found water can get into the microphone hole at the bottom. It doesn't have GPS. It comes with a remote control. It has a built-in microphone. It supports up to 128 gigabyte cards. Mounting is just a case of using the supplied brackets, which are GoPro compatible, then sticking it to the side of your lid. As soon as you power it up, it will start recording. And it, it, it kind of, the interface has a vibration motor in it, so you can feel when something's happening or if it's shutting itself down. And while it's claimed the battery lasts two and a half hours, I've had three hours and 16 minutes, though that was indoors with no movement to the image. So as it's working harder on the compression, expect that to drop a bit and the cold will affect it, but that claim two and a half hours does seem very realistic. You can power this from a battery back and there's a water resistant cable available, though of course this will mean a lead coming from your helmet. Now there's no dedicated smartphone app for the Techologic, but there is a generic one that still allows you to adjust settings, get a live view and watch or download clips. Now then, the footage. Now, there's a lot more movement as the camera's on the lid and the advantage of this is that if you want to catch that unmissable moment and it's to the side of the bike, it'll be filming where you look. And like the others, it's far from being a GoPro, but it is always on. And the best camera is the one you have with you after all. Footage is fine. Now I think the other cameras have the edge when it comes to the legibility of number plates at speed. And it's probably the addition of your head movement that compounds this. Still, at night it's very good and you don't always have to see a number plate to prove liability if the worst happens. Of course, it helps, and while I blurred them out, the driver and number plate were completely legible in this footage. So this is how the audio sounds from the Technologic DC1. So this is how the audio sounds from the Technologic DC1. Again, I'm about two meters away and I'm in the shelter of the garage. Outdoors, it still works well too. But yeah, the wind noise is an issue on the road. As there's no GPS, there's not as much benefit in using Dashcam Viewer. But as you can see here, it does help you sort the files and it still insets the rear view with the front. And the lens covers are pretty tough and pretty scratch resistant, but you can get replacements and you can get them in different colors now, which is kind of cool. And I like the fact that you can use that to make other road users more aware that you have a camera on. And I know that's certainly um, something that's popular with uh, horse riders as well. So which is best? Well, first of all, I'd urge you to read the full reviews in the links in the description, as I can cover a lot more in there than I can in this video, and they're always kept updated if anything changes. As you've probably seen though, the fact is that these cameras are all pretty similar at their core, with a few different extra features. And look at them side by side and you'll see the similarities. Some are better than others in different circumstances, but for me at least, none stands out for video quality from the others to the point that I'd say it's got to be the one to buy. They all suffer from compression artifacts to some extent, so it'd be great to see one with a higher bitrate, but the limiting factor with motorcycle dash cams is the cable that carries a signal to the main processor. You can't get data down a lead that can be routed through a bike to go beyond the 108030 that all these feature. That's why the 4K in of K5 has a processor built into the body of the front camera. Now the K3 has a maximum bit rate of 20 megabits per second, which is way off a GoPro. But I am surprised that it seemed, in my testing at least, to be a little weaker than the cheaper Viofo. But to be honest, I'm pretty much splitting hairs here as they're all using very similar, if not the same sensors. And there's not that much to pick between them in terms of video quality for their intended purpose. It's kind of within a margin of error. And they're pretty similar for field of view, but the Viofo edges it. Though of course the Technologic helmet mounted camera can see wherever you look. Now let's look at that first. It's not hardwired, so you have to keep it charged and you need to remember to turn it on. Still, it can be with you on any bike and I can tell you that it gave me great peace of mind to know that my accident footage had been recorded while I sat in A&E. In the end, it wasn't needed by the police or insurance as the driver didn't hesitate to take full responsibility. But for the two nights I ended up in hospital, it, it was a relief. If you want a front and rear helmet mounted dash cam, then while you don't get any GPS or speed logging, this is your best bet, I think. It's cheaper, less hassle than having to stick two GoPros on your lid, and it works. Right, if you're still watching, then you're more likely to want a hardwired camera, which does give the advantage of being something you can fit, 
and forget with a couple of caveats. Keep the lenses clean as it's annoying when you go to pull some footage off and realize there's road crap all over it. And reformat the card every month or so. Old footage is loop recorded and overwritten, but this gives you a chance to check everything's okay. And all three of these can be formatted via the app in just a couple of minutes. All of them definitely could use brighter lights on the remotes as you find yourself having to stare at them for longer than you should. The in-of is particularly annoying in the way the little green LED blinks every second when it's doing a manual recording. So you have to pretty well wait a second if you look at it at the wrong time. And for me, that's too long to be you know, eyes off the road. All of them need a nice bright light in a different color to tell you when you've pressed the button or more importantly, if there's a write error. Now they've all glitched on me at some point during the use, you know, over all the time I've been using these. And you know, I'm riding a lot. And so has my next base car cam. Card write errors or whatever, it is a fact of life, but generally they all work pretty solidly. There is room for improvement throughout, and going back to Nextbase, for example, that's become a brand synonymous with car dash cams. But it wasn't that long ago, they just seemed the cheap seller for in-car DVD players on Amazon. Now it's packaging and whole user experience is very polished, and they're tied in well with Halfords. And these bike dash cams do lack that, with some poor translations that don't give you that premium feel. But ultimately, the tech inside, which is what matters, does work well. Now all four of the brands here have UK distributors that should be able to help if you do have any problems. And Inov, Viofo and Techologic are all handled by the same UK company. And they are really helpful and do seem to work hard to keep customers happy. So you're not buying blindly from a drop shipper that won't give you any backup. And you'll find G-sensors as a feature to automatically save a recording from a suspected impact. But I think these are a waste of time on a bike. They seem to trigger at every bump and even hard braking or acceleration in some cases. So I just turn them off as they'll fill the card up, leaving less space for loop recordings, which could mean a clip you wanted but didn't press the button to save has been overwritten by the time you get home, especially with smaller capacity cards. Interestingly, keep in mind though that the Thinkware will cap the amount of manual recordings you can have, but the Inov will let you do as many as you want, so do keep on top of clearing the cards every so often. Now, I wouldn't suggest any of these cameras are good enough for a great video of your holiday. Consider the always on recording a bonus that means you can be pretty certain you'll capture that unmissable moment. But wish to buy, well, the Thinkware has a built-in backup power source, but I'd say it's pretty unlikely to need to be used on a motorcycle, and Inov gets around that with its TS video format. The Thinkware is also lacking the external GPS antenna, which can limit the accuracy at times. The Inov has the best feature set, especially its parking mode recording. So if you came back and found your bike on its side, this could pretty well likely show you the culprit. I reckon most people will rightly go with the Inov, but I've got to say that I prefer the field of view, the great mounting hardware, and the cheaper price of the Viofo, though it's definitely the less premium feeling. The fact that Viofo hasn't fixed that annoying glitch with the remote, and you know, I did speak to the um, factory in China about this a year ago, that puts me off a little, as it'd only take a firmware tweak to have a longer press of the Wi-Fi to activate it, or even ideally disable, or give the option in the app to disable the Wi-Fi button altogether and just have it come on for five minutes when the ignition's turned on. Because that's how the in-of works and you know, you're not gonna be accessing it while you're riding. So turn the ignition on to access the app. Like with many of the videos I do, I haven't ended up going, buy that one. You've gotta make some of your own decisions and between the Inov and the Viofo for the bike mounted cams or the Technologic for Helmet, you're gonna to have to make your own decision based on some of this. If you want more detail, then do check out the written reviews. The links are in the description, but I honestly, I really hope this has helped and thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more of these comparisons. And let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to test, but check out some of the videos I've already made, like the best chain lubes and corrosion protectants. I'll pop them up at the end of this video. And finally, I'm filming this between days at 2021's Motorcycle Live. So a big shout out to everyone who came over and said hello. It, it really does mean a lot to know that these videos have been of some help, but it was fantastic to meet you all.
Now I need to stress that yes, I work for an insurance company, but this review of dash cams doesn't mean we're trying to get people to use them and there are definitely no plans for that. More people are starting to use this tech and after my accident, which was just an unlucky one in more than 25 years of riding pretty much every day, I use them pretty well all the time too, just, just in case. I also fit one to our car for peace of mind, but yeah, hopefully this video has helped you decide but whether you have one or not is entirely up to you.